now. Good morning. Welcome to the Rushmore Labour Councillors <laughs> Weekly Online Surgery. My name is Keith Dibble. I'm leader of Rushmore Labour Group and a number of colleagues here from the four wards where we have councillors, which are Aldershot Park, Cherrywood, North Town and Wellington. Um, apologies for the change of date, but uh, technical expert and director had family commitments yesterday, so we're running the uh, surgery on Sunday. Uh, but we hope you find it as equally as informative and useful as previous weeks. And please feel free to ask any questions during the course of the programme. I'll just go around and I'll invite my colleagues to introduce themselves. We'll start with Aldershot Park. Hello, this is Sophie Porter from Councillor for Aldershot Park Board. And I believe we have Councillor Bridgman with us also from Aldershot Park Ward. Move on to Cherrywood. Yeah, my name is Councillor Ashley Holstead. I represent Cherrywood Ward. And the other two. And I'm from Cherrywood Ward. And Clive Ratton from Cherrywood Ward also. And Wellington Ward. Uh, good morning, Alex Crawford, Councillor for Wellington Ward. Good morning, Nadia Martin, Councillor for Wellington Ward. Okay, myself, Keith Dibble, representing North Town. Uh, my colleague, uh, Councillor Gaynor Austin, sends her apologies for today, as does Councillor Mike Roberts. So, we'll start then with the Council Tips, the Household Waste Recycling Centres, um, which opened... Uh, about three weeks ago and uh, as we all know there have been very long queues whether that be at Ivy Road in North Town or Invincible Road. Um, after pressure from residents and councillors the Hampshire County Council are introducing a booking system which goes live on Monday the 15th of June whereby you will be able to book online for uh, uh, an agreed appointment time. So that should uh, remove the uh, two or three hour wait that uh, residents have been having. Um, so this forthcoming week, and well today and for the rest of the week, it's business as usual. You just turn up, join the queue, and uh, dispose of your rubbish at the, uh, when you're allowed into the, into the, the facility. I'm pleased to say I used it yesterday, um, the Aldershot one. Apologies for the dog barking, but obviously very excited about hearing about the household waste disposal centre um, and queued for about 50 minutes. The staff were incredibly helpful and it ran very smoothly. But uh, there has been a demand for a booking system. So you need to go online to the Hampshire County Council website page, but that uh, facility only commences the booking system on the 15th. So you can't pre-book at the moment for the week commencing Monday the 15th. But has anyone used, uh, anyone on the call, used any of the uh, Hampshire facilities and have any feedback? That's very good. You've obviously got piles of rubbish at home then, building up to uh, to use the facility when you can book. I have got piles and piles of rubbish, but yeah, because Farnborough's has been like two, two and a half hour queues. Yeah. Um, I have just completely avoided it, but yeah, I have got piles and piles of rubbish waiting to go um, yeah, I'm, i am looking forward to the booking system good good i must say the staff at ivy road in in, in north town all the shop were, were very good yesterday as you were queuing on the road they came along and said look have you got any garden waste or clothes uh, to, to dispose of um and uh, how long you would be and uh, yeah that, that worked really well I said, ask the question, well, what's going to happen at a booking system when people aren't aware of it and people turn up, will they be turned away um, and told to go and book? And uh, he said they hadn't been briefed on that yet. So I think whilst many people will see it as a step forward, again, it's all about communication and people being aware because a lot of people sort of clear their garden, clear their shed and just say, right, we'll go to the, 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 the council dump now or the council tip now and not realising they've got to book. So... I think there'll be some, some, as ever, winners and losers. Another important day. Sorry. Sorry, here's someone. Sorry, to come yeah. In. yeah, I want to speak about the 
uh, hip issue, um, one of the crucial things would be to avoid that issue about people arriving at the gates of the tip not having booked, would be to have suitable warning notices um, at, for example, the entrance to Ivy Road off North Lane and at the entrance to Eelmore Lane off wherever the main road is as you come into Eelmore Road and Farnborough. And there has to be clear notices. They have this in Farnham. As you approach the Farnham tip off the um, Shepherd and Flock roundabout, they have special notices up there to alert you to the fact that uh, what the, the guidelines are. So they need to have good notices well back from the tip in order to alert people to it. So um, perhaps we could draw that to the attention of Hampshire County Council since Surrey County Council seems to have that in place. Well, could one of our could one of our groups just write to their county council? We've been told that uh, from our previous discussions over traffic issues with the county council that our voice was not important. So, um, could someone please take that as an action. Um, I think the the best uh, county councillor to contact in our area would be Bill Withers, um, since uh, um, he seems to be the most conscientious about it. So. Um, someone who's a count, who's a, a, a ward councillor in his division would be best to contact him. I'd take it up for um, for the farmer area if you like. Keith, you're on mute. as are most of my colleagues this morning. Um, so Clive, if you if you raise it with Roz, Chad, I will raise it with um, with Bill Withers, okay? Well, the 15th of June is also an important day because it's when the shops will, all non-essential shops will reopen. And we understand that Rushmore are working um, with traders to come up with a, a plan that makes queuing and such things uh, easier for everyone. So Councillor Crawford, perhaps you could update us on that. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the key date is the 15th of June. And um, obviously, for shopkeepers uh, and businesses, they need to work closely with um, the uh, people at Rushmore Borough Council who are planning this. I believe it's uh, um, the traffic management unit uh, who are um, going to be arranging the um, agreement where the queuing is going to take place. A particular hot spot in Aldershot will be at Wellington Street and Little Wellington Street because that's where you have businesses like Lidl and um, the banks and other shops um, like uh, Greg's and so on. The and all uh, will be needing queuing spaces um, to uh, for people to queue, and it, it, it's likely to become a bit hectic. Another concern I have is um, that, that, that Wellington Street is um, a street where you might say the street attached um, congregate and look out for um, people to give them donations and that kind of thing. And uh, um, there, it, it just seems to me all very dangerous if you get too close. So I would say anyone who's going shopping in that area should certainly get themselves a face mask and order to wear a face mask while they're queuing and while they're in the shop so that's that would be my recommendation thank you uh, thank you alex yeah. can i just come in there yes, please. Yes, please. yeah it, <clears throat> it's very well alex saying if you're going to queue wear a mask but the problem is his street attacks people who should be wearing the mask because the masks aren't for your own protection, they're for other people's protection. And there's nothing you can do if somebody approaches you who's not wearing a mask. That's correct. That's correct. Also, Keith, um, on that sort of basis, um, seeing that you've got Lidl's and the other shops down that Wellington Street, I think it'd be advisable to shut that entrance to the Wellington Centre so they use the other entrance so there's not a, a group 
passing everyone else down in shops to actually just go into the centre itself. So they move the um, close that side off and move it to the other side. It might be an easier way to um, stop traffic going through that way. Okay, I'll I'll take that up with uh, yeah. uh, with Rushmore Borough Council. Thanks, Clive. Yeah, I mean on Thursday we as elected members will get a briefing on the town centre management. Um, I understand that, that there will be uh, ambassadors, council ambassadors out on the streets advising people and there will be uh, designated uh, areas for every store for for customers to queue um, and uh, there will be various zones and such things. But I believe it will, you know, it looks it looks a uh, the draft stage, quite a comprehensive plan. But of course, it's all depend on down on uh, human human behaviour. But masks, what do people feel about wearing uh, masks? The uh, World Health Organization yesterday suggested that anyone over 60 should uh, should wear a mask at all times when in public places. So um, I've, I've not worn a mask at all during the, uh, the pandemic, um, but uh, I know Councillor Crawford has. And Councillor uh, uh, Guinness, you put your hand up there. Yeah, I was just gonna say, well, I think we have to also remember, I mean, you know, if if I go out, um, I'm happy to wear a mask, and I have worn one. Um, but yeah, you know, my eldest child is 15, and walking down the road with her, you know, she looks absolutely normal, but she does have autism, and you know, people have to remember that not everyone's going to feel comfortable with it. Um, so you know, we have to be careful about how we look at people. You know, because the last thing we want is, you know, I walk down the road with with my daughter, and people are like, oh, she hasn't got a mask on. But actually, there is no way she's going to feel comfortable in, in wearing a mask. It it would just absolutely turn her world upside down. So I think I think we have to be so careful about that sort of thing. Yeah, and I, and and I think you know, on a personal level, if the government said it's mandatory will do it if it isn't people won't do it and i think that's one of the problems in in the uk at the moment with the uh, the, the the guidelines being somewhat uh, open to interpretation but that's uh, but we have ordered as a family we've ordered some masks so we will be uh, we will be uh, we will be wearing them when we go out picking up the uh, who's guidance um so that's shop so but next week's call Keith, with- sorry can i just say about masks as well Obviously, so can ask colleagues that um, so, it's so they it's speak, so can they please use the chat board because I've now got the chat board up and oh, okay if they put their hand so I'm, ever, I'm ever so sorry I'm, I'm, I can't act um, I can't access no, carry on. well on my phone so I so I really apologize about that um I'm just saying about masks masks are really important but I really want to reiterate um the importance of hand washing as well if you have been out and about is to come home and wash your hands and try not to touch your face. So if you're going, if you're wearing a mask and you're touching your and you and you're touching the outside of the mask, and then you're going to be taking that off and, and touching your face, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be uh, suitable. But masks are there to prevent you, um, and very much these cloth masks are there to prevent you um, sharing uh, sharing the virus with others. Yeah, I think I think you've made a really good point there, Sophie. Because at the moment, it even though it's very grey, it's almost seen as if well, if you wear a mask, you don't need to take any other precautions. If you wash your hands, you don't need to take any other precautions. If you two meter distancing, you don't need to take any other precautions. In fact, it's all of them, isn't it? It's all of those. It's all of those behaviours that that need to be need to be undertaken. So that's that's really so. Well, so next next Saturday we'll be able to brief. Um, our residents with a little bit more information on on the rules and guidelines for the town centres. Um, free parking um, in our town centres will continue for the next two or three weeks. I understand it from um, from uh, the cabinet meeting I attended, the informal cabinet meeting I attended the other night. Um, the council are starting to feel the pinch by losing the revenue from parking, but uh, it was felt which I certainly supported that um, we shouldn't, Rushmore shouldn't introduce parking charges from day one as soon as the shops open. There should certainly be, um, certainly for the rest of June anyway, um, uh, free parking. 
Okay. So that, can, can I just mention this about the parking? Because um, according to Rushmore Borough Council, the money that's collected from parking charges is only supposed to be used for um, um, traffic relevant issues. So it's not affecting the council service, other services generally. So this myth that's being promulgated, the council needs the money from parking, seems to me, in order to support services, seems to me to be need to be clarified because it's supposed to be ring fence for local traffic issues, not to be spent on council services generally. And, uh, you know, the fact is, with so few people going out to the shops, if Rushmore is the only borough locally that's introducing parking charges, what's the likelihood of people coming into Aldershot and Farnborough to shop when they can go to Farnham, Guildford, Basingstoke, park for nothing and shop there? Yeah, Alex, that's a, a really valid point. Um, I My understanding is that that, that no longer has, is, and I'm not, I'm not here defending the corporate body, so I tend to agree with your I do agree with your sentiments but I thought that it's long gone that the parking money was used just for just for for, for, for maintaining car parks um, from from the way cabinet uh, spoke the other day is that uh, it leaves a big hole every day that uh, they're not collecting parking uh, parking revenue but that's something for our elected members members of this group on the budget working party or uh, overview and scrutiny to uh, to challenge I would say but uh, for, for end users, parking um, charges will not be uh, implemented at the moment which is uh, which is a good thing moving on then to um, something I just I mentioned to uh, last week which was the decision of the uh, Boyer or Bauer um, media group to plan to close uh, our local radio station Eagle Radio and replace it with a regional um, program without local presenters and the odd local news or traffic item um, started a petition got real support and as of this morning it's up to uh, 4,992 so before the start of this broadcast we were eight uh, signatures away from the 5,000 which um, is at that point I will then send the petition off to uh, to, to, to Bauer Media. Um, I have uh, written to Ofcom, um, raising formal objection on the plans, um, and, and, and that uh, closed on Thursday, so that's gone in there. So again, I will thank everyone during the course of the weekend um, for their support, and uh, will um, co contact, and I've started to contact all of the um, MPs in uh, West Surrey and North East Hampshire. So thank you everyone for their support on that and we'll keep you updated as we progress forward. Moving then on to ward updates. Our colleagues in Aldershot Park, any, any issues you want to flag up this morning? Sorry, I was just unmuting myself there. Um, what, we've, what we've had, um, we've been working very much with the local policing teams, and I'd like to publicly thank them, um, for increasing patrols in Aldershot Park. We've, um, we've been having a lot of antisocial behaviour there overnight, and Terry will update you uh, on the letter that's, that he's written to the Chief Constable um, about looking at some of the issues in, in Aldershot Park. Um, but um, they've, the police have been there every single day, especially in the evening, um, to try and prevent parties um, that have been happening there overnight. Terry can update you about his letter. Terry, do you want to update you? Yeah, um, apart from the fact no update on the, we've not had a reply yet. Um, the, the reply, or the, the reply, the acknowledgement came back to say it's being dealt with. Um, if it's not been dealt with by the middle of next week, then perhaps we'll have another go at that. Um, and so if he's right, there, there, you know, there, there's, a, there's an increased presence that they are doing something about the, the parties. But the big problem, I've had another complaint about it this week, is the drug taking. Um, there's this problem down the bottom of Herrick Street, and there appears to be a problem in the 
uh, Aldershot Park as well. Um, and uh, the police need to get to get hold of that. Although <laughs> in the past, when you've approached them for it, one of the accusers is, well, it's all part of a bigger thing, uh, trying to imply that, yeah, we're after bigger fish than just these local distributors. And that's why they don't do anything about it. But uh, that's not good enough. And of course, if you've got uh, drug dealers working uh, your patch, you want it out of the way. So um, obviously that's another thing that we need to keep an eye on. Sophie, um, travellers were a bit an issue, I think, in all the shop park this week. Do you want to give us an update on, on what happened there? Um, well, we, we did had some residents report that there were, were some of our travelling um, community were, were trying to um, settle in Aldershot Park, but because there were barriers up, they were not, um, they, they decided not to go there and um, are, are, have moved to the rugby club down at Farnham. Yeah, I drove past the rugby club yesterday and they, they appeared to have been moved on. So I don't know where they've where they've gone from there, but uh, I think it's excellent news that the barriers put up in both Aldershot Park and Ivy Fields in Northtown prevented uh, access. So um, yeah, that, that, if you think back two or three years ago, they would have been there, or even last year they'd have been there for a few days now. So um, good news, but of course it's just moving a problem all the time. Thank you. Anything else in Aldershot Park? Okay, let's move on to our colleagues in Cherrywood. Anything to report? Uh, so, uh, yes, if I go first on that, uh, we've eventually got our chains and our padlocks on the um, the Farnborough Football Club at this moment in time, which they are locking on a regular basis now. But we've had um, a, a donut van move into the car park at the moment, they're selling coffees and hot donuts so if you fancy a hot donut Keith you're quite welcome to come down there and have a donut. Not me I'm not a great donut lover actually. <laughs> Too much sugar for my life. Um, we've had the odd occasion of um, neighbourhood disputes at the moment. Um, I think people are getting on each other's nerves and uh, it's coming out into a an on-street system. We are having regular police patrols around there's always something around and um, our fly tipping is still increasing, but um, I think we've got some influencers that seem to know the area where we have our fly tipping most, and I think they're coming in from outside to um, just um, build the um, fly tipping up around that area because they know mm. it gets taken away. I, I don't know if Christine's got anything else to add to that. Christine Council Guinness, anything to add? Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say about the fly tipping, but um, Clive's covered it, so no, that's fine. Okay, Councillor Halstead? Yeah, so I've been chasing up the, uh, the grounds maintenance team a lot on green spaces. It seems a lot of places are being missed. Uh, so I've got Chaucer, which has been done, Austin, which is, I've had a response saying it's going to be added to. Uh, the team's schedule for working and then I've also got Caswell and Carmarthen which I haven't had responses to but I'm looking at sort of flagging all the reports up because if they're missing a large chunk of areas then it's clear that they're not doing what they're contracted to do so if you if you've been missed or your area has been missed let me know and I'll report it on and build a log Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any questions to our Cherrywood uh, colleagues? Okay, Wellington, uh, Councillor Crawford and Councillor Martin, any updates, please? Um, I think Nadia wanted to update about the parking situation in the garrison. Um, yeah, so I've, I have emailed um, Amy, but I've not, not had a response as of yet. Um, hopefully I can update more next weekend. But they're bringing parking permits into the Waterloo estate. So anyone parking there to use the town centre or when and if the football starts back up, if they don't have a parking permit, they will receive a fine. I'm just not sure on when it's going to be implemented, but I have asked the question and I've also asked if all the other army estates will be um, have a, need parking permits. 
so what impact will that have because whenever i uh walk through or 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 go into the uh, those 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 um mod estates there seems to be loads of cars parked all over the place yeah there is um i've i've um been through waterloo recently and i think the shop's been closed and with the town center being so quiet it has made a huge difference already yeah. There's yeah, I, I drove through yesterday and I did notice there were, were loads and loads of cars parked there. Um, so I can only assume that's because the residents were parking them because every lamp post had one of these private parking notices on it. It was most unsightly as you drove through to see that every lamp post had one of these warning notices on saying that if you weren't a resident, you would be fined and so on. And uh, um, uh, but there we are. That's the system that uh, and and people will be given have given due notice that uh, they will be fined if they park there if they're not residents. So that's it. And I think uh, you know it's down to us. I think it was uh, um, was it this time last year or two years ago? I can't remember. We we raised it as an issue with the garrison commander and. Uh, um, so now, all this time later, it's come to fruition where they've actually introduced a system uh, to prevent the abuse there. So um, from that point of view, we could claim credit as the ward councillors. But I mean, I know you have a good working relationship with them, but you weren't briefed at all that they were going to do this in the, in the last few couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was mentioned to us at our cups and coffee morning that it was going to take place from the 1st of April, but obviously that didn't happen on time. Yeah. Probably okay. because of the virus, but yeah. Okay, but you'll, give, you'll keep us updated on that, and I expect you'll start yeah. to get... Once people start issuing signs or whatever, you'll get, you'll get a load of queries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I've got um, a couple of other things. Uh, first of all, um, I should say that um, uh, on Thursday, the 4th of June, should have been the decision day for the um, Union Street development, whether it was going to go ahead or not. But of course, with COVID-19, um, everything has been um, held up while the council re-evaluates and has uh, what they call, um, they, they, they carry out due diligence to see whether the project um, uh, is going to be viable in the same way as they thought it was going to be six months ago. And we're still awaiting for that decision. The other big thing that's been held up in the town centre is the planning application for the biggest development, which is the galleries. And we haven't heard yet. That was supposed to have been in months ago, but we still haven't seen um, any final planning application from uh, the developer for that site either. So uh, unfortunately with COVID-19, town centre regeneration is being held up. Yeah, um, as I understand it, and I agree with you completely, I mean, we don't need to worry about the galleries because for the past three years, it's always coming next week, Alex. It'll be next week, we know that. Um, but no, that is a worry. Um, and as I understand it, um, a paper will be going to cabinet on the 23rd of June about proposed changes to the ownership and management of the Union Street East plan. Um, the consultants have been uh, commissioned and um, a change. I don't know what that change will be. And I think maybe Christine, Councillor Guinness has been uh, perhaps told that there are changes is is coming forward in in how it's owned and and managed, but we have to we can't comment until we know what that is. Has anyone else had any briefings on on any on that at all? Well, my concern is that it's going to cabinet on the twenty third of June, and I believe the council meeting is um, on the twenty fifth of June. So, does this mean it's going to be rushed through that council meeting or? Well, we don't know. We don't, I mean, we, we don't know, Alex. That's that's questions that we have to ask. But um, I, I was just told on Friday that there will be. I asked a question about what is the change. Was told a report was going to uh, 
to cabinet but um if cabinet make a decision there's got to be the uh the, the, this is for people um any members of the public listening if cabinet make a decision members have an opportunity um a 10-day period where we can review and call in a decision so we will be allowed uh, i'm sure that um that 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 uh, um opportunity because i don't think anything as important as this can be dealt with as emergency measures if that's the case we as a labor group a labor opposition would have to object even if we felt it was the right thing to do i think it still needs to we need to be able to do due diligence and scrutinize ourselves but again i'm not here as the defender of the corporate body just just passing on um information anything else from wellington ward the other thing is the future of the football club um a couple of weeks ago this was raised as a um, a big issue in the sense that if um, something wasn't done, Aldershot Town Football Club um, could be going under. But we haven't heard anything since. And uh, there was an announcement this week that uh, um, Sport England would give some money to keep smaller clubs going. But we don't know anything about how this might affect uh, Aldershot Town, and which is obviously a, an important uh, um, part of the community in Aldershot. Oh, yeah, it's really important. I think we need we as a, a, a an opposition group and uh, re representatives of many, many hundreds, if not thousands, of Aldershot supporters should uh, keep our pressure on the football club. And uh, perhaps you and uh, Councillor Bridge and Terry can uh, can approach them again this week for for a meeting, for at least for an update. Um, moving on to to North Town, um, we'll come on to McDonald's and uh, KFC traffic in a moment. I think my, our colleague, Councillor Austin, has produced a short video there. Um, this afternoon, we've got the uh, the, the final uh, charitable uh, raffle draw of the Star Off licence. They've been running that through the uh, pandemic and have raised over a thousand pounds for NHS charities. And I'm privileged to be asked to do the draw there this afternoon at three o'clock. So if anyone would like to pop down to the Star Off license and buy their tickets before the uh, three o'clock deadline. Good news from Vivid is that they have started uh, booking non-emergency repairs. Um, and uh, obviously that affects all the uh, all the wards, but um, that uh, will uh, We'll, we'll, we'll pick up now. My concern is that with Vivid that they will make the appointments and then fail to show and then defer them. So uh, tenants' enthusiasm of receiving uh, uh, a date, um, hopefully will be, expectations will be met when the uh, appropriate workman turns up on the day. Building works on the, uh, the next stage of the My North Town project continues, um, which is good, good to see. Uh, our discussions continue with the post office, Rushmore, and uh, other interested partners on the future, securing the future of the North Town Post Office. That will um, continue through through the summer. Uh, we have a deadline at the end of October to, to find a solution there. And on uh, Wednesday, uh, I've arranged a meeting with our two county councillors. Councillor Withers for Aldershot South and the Councillor Chowdhury for Aldershot North and invited Councillor Porter from Aldershot Park to join me and Councillor Austin and uh, the traffic management team. We want to propose a section of, uh, of North Town and it includes a, a small a part of Aldershot Park into one of these, um, whether it be Green Zone or, or, or Amsterdam solutions, which is within the triangle of the railway line, Ash Road, High Street and North Lane, that everything within that triangle could become a 20 mile an hour speed limit, a lorry ban, um, the, 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 the exemptions would be for deliveries and collections, and of course the refuse uh, wagons. Um, and in, that, that would, so 20 mile an hour speed limit, lorry ban, and uh, one or two other measures to improve uh, pedestrian and cycle access, um, and and that's really what we're what we're we're pushing forward. The reason 
I mean, Gainer and I, and previously uh, Frank Gainer and I discussed this as a potential uh, um, pilot area. And uh, on Monday of last week, a biffer, huge biffer uh, wagon, um, which was picking up commercial waste, um, went down Holly Road as a, as, a, as, a, as a shortcut to the industrial units in North Town and managed to hit 10 cars. So um, totally inappropriate for vehicles like that to be using um, Holly Road as a, as, a, as a rat run or a shortcut. So again, it's, uh, it's dipping our toe in the water, putting an idea forward and we'll see if there's any, uh, any support for that. Okay, so that's any questions from any of the public on, on the ward issues. Could I just uh, uh, ask a question, please? Yes, please, Mrs. Sherwood. Yes. Um, I noticed on um, the Here for North Town page that someone in Canning Road had had break-ins and a couple of bikes stolen. Um, I, and then someone else on another ward um, had said the same. So I just wondered if this is an isolated incident or whether you'd had um, reports of um, more incidents. Well, from, from North Town, there have been a number of bicycle thefts um, and the local beat police team with their limited numbers are investigating. Um, and uh, but, but reading the various social media sites, it does appear that petty theft at the moment, or petty theft if, if you your bike stolen isn't petty, but, um, but there seems to be, uh, over the last couple of weeks, a, a nasty trend of, of bicycles and, and other pieces of equipment being stolen. And, and I saw this morning that someone had put a chest of drawers or something out on the pavement for some for a relative to come and pick up, and that had been stolen. But um, I, I, one hopes that you know we just encourage people to report it to the to the police, um, and uh, you know the, the more evidence they have, the more they can investigate. We did have the situation in Ivy Field, what well, Covers, who were located um, off Holder Road, adjacent to Ivy Fields, where. Um, a, a dog walker early, I think it was Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday morning, noticed that there were uh, a number of planks, huge planks, both dropped on Ivy Field and in the footpath from Ivy Field to Eastern Road. Um, yeah, there'd been a break in and uh, pleased to say there is photographic evidence of a couple um, stealing them. Um, I've got a copy, um, it's with the police. I'd like to put it on social media, but of course that would not be the appropriate thing to do. But um, if you've ever seen the film The Plank, you've got uh, two piece or two people, a bicycle, and about twenty planks of wood. Um, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be, it would be it's very funny to look at, but it's not uh, not 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 good. So yeah, there does appear to be an increase in that uh, crime, and um, that's important that everything is reported. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Right. Can I just come in on that? I've put my me, me name and Alan on the chat group. Yes, um, I've seen it. Uh, seems, uh, Bratton, yes. It just seems that um, the bike thefts, thefts are linked to drug crimes because we found around our area people are using stolen bikes from the backs of people's garden to get around the estates to um, actually sell their drugs. So they are linked to a degree. So everyone needs to be aware of that. And even though they're climbing over fences, you still need to chain your bike up in your garden as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. That means crime prevention. That's why our Cops and Coffee are very, um, very important sessions when we have them, when, when local councillors arrange to meet the local beat team in a, a cafe or a community hall to discuss those local uh, crime prevention issues. And I know some people criticise them, but actually they're very informative and very useful for residents to understand what steps they have to take um but yeah i'm, I'm afraid that the the, the uh, investigation into the, the the theft of the wood from covers is suggesting that the the, 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 the uh, alleged culprits are are stealing to sell to to to, to, to provide funds for for drug abuse so um but uh, that's obviously an investigation ongoing so thank you thank you clive uh a meeting this week that many many of us attended is the Rushmore Cycle Forum, which is uh, an informal organisation, I think the clue of the uh, is in the title, but of cyclists who 
um, meet with local authorities and other cycle groups to improve cycle routes and safety for cyclists. Councillor Porter, you, you attended the session that uh, I was with. Why don't you just give us an update on some of the things that they're looking at, what, what they're hoping to do? Yes, well, um, the Rushmore Cycle Forum have had a couple of online events where they've held meetings um, as a, a way to update people about their Rushmore, the, sorry, their Rushmore Cycle Network Plan. The, the whole aim of the group is to try and promote people from switching um, from car journeys to cycle journeys and to ensure that cyclists can sort of navigate their journeys safely. Now, we're, uh, on the meetings, what they've done is they have proposed um, a network similar to a tube map uh, to develop cycle pathways um, for everybody all around Rushmore. And um, what, what they did is they highlighted different areas. They, they took us through the process of why they've chosen certain areas. And they're looking for support from, um, from Rushmore and Hampshire County Council. Now, the forum has a, a, a website and actually the, the cycle forum, if anyone is interested, is free for anybody to join. And you can find their website on www.rushmorecycleforum.co.uk. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, a very, very enthusiastic group. They've, they've had some meetings, a number of meetings with Councillor Clifford, the leader of the council, who suggested there will be funding available now i think this is the key to um their their future and the future of many of these schemes that you know when do we see the money or when do they see the money and when can these schemes be implemented but uh, certainly with aldershot there are huge chunks of a victorian town without uh, any scope for uh, for, for safe recycling routes but i think it's a group that we're very supportive of and um i think more people can get involved the better McDonald's, the three McDonald's, uh, drive through McDonald's opened uh, a week or so, or last week, um, in Farnborough Gate, the Tumble Down Dick in Farnborough, and Ash Road Aldershot, creating, in the short term, all sorts of problems. And I believe uh, we have a video prepared by uh, my Northbound colleague, Councillor Austin, to give us an update on where we are. Is that ready, uh, Ash? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you want to watch that now? It's a great video, but apologies for the audio. It's a little bit muffled. I think uh, Gainer did it with less than 100% TV technical equipment, so you'll have to excuse the equipment. Yeah, please, but, let's um, yeah. Now we'll show the video. Um, everybody else will see it, but you guys won't, I'm afraid. So here we go. Uh, you will, you might hear it, I'm not sure, but here we go. Everyone on the stream can Hi, see the video. Hi, Gaynor Austin, North Town Ward Councillor, here over at the McDonald's on North Lane with the North Close Junction here, just updating you on what's been happening with the traffic. I live just across the road, so I hear and see what's, what's going on. We've been working with the management of McDonald's and KFC to try and minimise any disruption on the roads. Now, we're just slightly after about 6.30 and the rush, dinner time rush is over but there's still quite a lot of traffic trying to get into North Close. I'm just going to go and have a look down here and speak to um, the area manager, Dan, who can update us on what's been going, going on. We will be holding a meeting on Monday with the management of KFC and McDonald's again just to see how things have been going and if there's anything that could be improved upon as the restaurants continue to open up um, further aspects of their business. So I'm just going to go along here now and have a chat to Dan, the regional manager. Hi Dan, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, we're here to um, yeah, just ask how, how it's been going. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a couple of challenges on Wednesday when we first opened across the dinner period, but um, in general much better. We've kept the traffic flowing on the, the North Coast en entrance and capped it off as soon as we got a, a bit of a queue. Um, had some challenges stopping people turning right and turning left, but our intention is to cap it off here, keep the traffic flowing, prevent problems. But in general, it's um, much better. The flow's been good, 
tried out the system myself the other day in the car with um, with my daughter Amber. And I must say it was it was going really well. It didn't take us very long at all. Very well organised. Brilliant. Proud to hear. Proud to hear. We're, we're, uh, we're getting quicker every day. Great. No, uh, we'll catch up with you on Monday. And, okay. Uh, see how things are. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Right. So um, that was that was the video. Uh, so um, you guys didn't see the video, so I, I will just very quickly tell you what happened. Um, Gaynor um, was stood outside McDonald's. She saw the large line of traffic, but she saw that it was well managed. And she spoke to the regional manager of McDonald's, Dan, uh, who said that uh, you and uh, you, Keith and Gaynor and Dan and the management of KFC were going to have another meeting on Monday to discuss the issue and any concerns that local residents may or may not have. So I don't know if you want to give an update on that, Keith. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock tomorrow um, with, uh, as I said, the two companies, KFC McDonald's, um, a couple of the businesses from uh, who use North Close, um, County Council, the Withers. Um, yeah, and, and I think the feedback from, from local residents has been that McDonald's have been exemplary in their traffic management. I mean, on Wednesday, the day it opened, it was uh, very congested. And I guess that would be for every McDonald's that opened on, on Wednesday. Um, and drivers were getting impatient who wanted just to go down North Lane, not going to McDonald's, and were pulling out onto the other lane um, and uh, trying to overtake the queue. Um, but uh, the, the numbers using it have been... Uh, I think probably reducing um, at those peak times as people's urge for a for a, a lot a, 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 an escape burger um, is um, as, as Wayne. But so both McDonald's and KFC have been in, certainly done well in investing in bodies to, to to manage the traffic and all the queues. And within the the, the, the snaking in the McDonald's car park, they it can actually take fifty vehicles. So. Um, they are able to, uh, to, to 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 get a lot of the queuing vehicles on site, but yeah, we'll see what the uh, the next stage is tomorrow. But I think both companies have been responsible corporate uh, citizens and trying to be good neighbours. Um, there are lots of people, certainly with the North Town facilities, that you know we wish they weren't there. Um, but those arguments are gone, really. Um, but there's no point. We you know they are there, and we have to to make it as safe and uh, user friendly and neighbor friendly as possible. But yeah, yeah. so we're looking forward to tomorrow's meeting. Thank you, Ash. And thank you, Gaynor, for, for doing that. Local policing, uh, we touched on that earlier on, Councillors Bridgeford and Porter. Do you want to further expand on that? Oh, um, <coughs> I had two remarks from the earlier version covers the I would say, Royal Keeper, I am, if we have the midweek, we'll contact them again to find out what's going on. I would remind other members, if you've got uh, Jim Rinsons, just know, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think, I, just as Terry was saying, it's really important for residents to continue to report um, any antisocial behaviour or any or any crime that they witness through the through the normal routes, such as using 101, that, uh, items can be reported online, and also calling 999 if it is an emergency. So to continue reporting, and uh, what that does is that helps for the local policing teams to see where there are, there are trends of issues or hotspots of areas. So con continue to report and, and let us know. And as Terry said, he'll take it forward. Good, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillors Bridgman and Porter. Small businesses, we know, have been struggling during the, uh, the pandemic and uh, the government have given support via local authorities to those small businesses. Um, Councillor Halstead, Ashley, can you update us on what small businesses should be doing if they haven't yet received their grants or they require consideration for a further grant? 
Uh, so essentially, we do have a grant scheme in place at Rushmore, and that's open till 5 p.m. on the 16th of this month. So you've got just over a week to apply. Uh, there, you have to apply by 5 p.m. on that date, but they're giving special priority to small businesses that have shared offices or flexible working spaces. Uh, also, bed and breakfasts that pay council tax rather than business rates and market traders. Uh, the grants do range from two and a half thousand to ten thousand, and they can be used for sort of your rent, your electric, insurance, etc. In order to be eligible, you need to have been trading on on or before the eleventh of March this year. Have less than fifty employees, a rateable value of fifty one thousand or over of, of uh, or under, and have re- or have relatively high fixed property related costs uh, so you can apply on the website on rushmore.gov.uk forward slash business grants and that should take you to the area where we're helping people with um, discretionary payments uh, as a small business you can actually get a business rate relief anyway uh, and in order to do that you can apply as well it's all on the same page all handy PDF links. If you're a retailer, hospitality or leisure, you can get up to 25,000 and you'll be given a a rates relief of 100% for the next 12 months in order to help you get through the period. And again, just to remind everyone, if they if they want to apply, where do uh, where do those small business owners go? It's rushmore.gov.uk forward slash business grants. Okay, thank you, Ashley. That's really good news. And we will make sure that that's posted on the various uh, social media sites we have. COVID-19, um, Councillor Crawford, you take a um, great deal of interest and update us all on the ongoing figures as it impacts on Rushmore. So where... Where are we at the moment? Are yeah, sure. numbers the, starting to, 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 to drop on a uh, on a weekly basis? I mean, any yeah, sure. dreadful. The, the, but, uh, the um, Office of National Statistics, this uh, that provides all this data to everyone around the country, for some reason this week they changed the whole basis on which they'd been providing data. So that what we found this week was that the first case of infection in Rushmore was actually detected on the 5th of March, whereas previously they said it was the 25th of March. In other words, three weeks earlier than uh, had previously been thought. And so the whole figures have all been reworked um, since that time for the past three months. And uh, it showed that the peaks actually happened um, um, towards the beginning of April um, to the middle of April, whereas before, they were saying the peaks were between the middle of April and the third week in April. So everything seems to have uh, shifted backwards a bit. But what is remarkable is that in the past week, despite everyone who has symptoms now having the opportunity to have a test, there have been only three cases of COVID-19 infection detected for the 95, 96,000 uh, residents of Rushmore. So it shows you how um, it's uh, um, the relatively um, very low now in Rushmore. And I think this has implications for the future for how the people of Rushmore are going to behave. Because you know, the, if there's no infection around, why are we having all these um, uh, measures in place that seem to be still on the basis that there's lots of infection around. There may well be lots of infection around in the northwest of England or in um, the northeast of England or wherever, but in Rushmore, it seems that there's very little infection around at the moment. So that's the situation. Um, as far as deaths are concerned, um, there's been um, up until the um, uh, 22nd of May, there had been 74 deaths from COVID-19 in Rushmore. And that's uh, 
um, uh, not out of uh, uh, it's slightly higher than the average um, rate of death for the country as a whole, but it's not uh, um, that uh, um, out of uh, kilter really. So that's uh, the situation in Rushmore. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I mean, and and again, I think it's it's for for for, for all of us, it's so confusing, isn't it? As we discussed earlier on, different advice, different guidelines. Um, no social, you know, we should social distance. And then you see events on the television news last night where people in good faith attended a you know public protests and such things, but uh, there seemed to be very little social distancing there. And uh, there's an event today in 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 Farnborough to uh, at uh, Queens Road Recreation Ground one till four today, um, a protest or rally about the awful uh, incident in in America. Um, but I know lots of people are really concerned about attending because will the vast majority of people there ignore social distancing? So I think it is a dilemma for uh, for us all. So the charities, how are they? How are they performing? Still, still at uh, huge demands on them. The, the the vine, Alex. How's that? Is there as much pressure on them as as ever? Yeah, sure. I mean, as far as the vine's concerned, I mean this this last week um they supported um uh, how should I put it, a record number of uh, um, people with supportive phone calls for um their problems either um, uh, um difficulties they have in coping or mental health problems and so there were over 200 people contacted just for that alone last week um and uh, they've now um Last week, they provided, for example, 253 families with uh, um, home cooked meals. So the demand is still there because um, the economic impact, as it is everywhere in the country, is tremendous of this COVID-19. There is unemployment in Rushmore has uh, more than doubled in the, the past month simply because of COVID-19. There are hundreds and and hundreds of people on furlough and obviously on furlough they have reduced incomes and so that means all the time there is this increased demand for support um, for these basic services food parcels care packages and even believe it or not um, some people have need support to feed their pets and so the vine center has a program for doing that and uh, um, i know that the um, the other um, community organisations, uh, um, Aldershot Response to Coronavirus and the um, COVID-19 mm. Farnborough, they are still active in the community, supporting their people as well. Um, and uh, so this will have to go on into the future. And in fact, um, with uh, the, um, as the furlough scheme winds down uh, later in the year, we're going to see many more unemployed and so there's going to be a lot more need for um, people to be supported to find jobs, to be uh, get uh, financial support simply to go forward. And so we need to be keeping um, uh, the pressure on the authorities to make sure that these provisions are in place when they're needed. Thank you, Alex. Very, very uh, valid points there. Uh, Christine, Councillor Guinness, you've been working closely with the Farnborough Group. How's is, is that just as much pressure as ever? Yeah, so well, the COVID-19 in Cherrywood has been really quiet this week, but we have started looking at, when, when, when this first started, we delivered leaflets and put through every door. Um, we're now looking at the amount of leaflets we've got left over and looking at doing a second run and actually putting the leaflets back through everyone's door. Um, obviously, we're concerned that there might be people out there that you know picked it up and just put it in the bin, thinking it's junk mail, um, and they don't have access to our Facebook pages and um, websites and things. So we are looking to do a second run just to check because obviously we do still think there's a second wave that that could possibly happen, and we want to make sure we can reach out to everyone that that needs it. Um, I'd also like to say a massive well done. Uh, and thank you to the Scrub Hub, who um, are in Water Lane on our ward. And they've been making scrubs for Frimley Park Hospital. 
Um, and this week they've also helped out with one of our local nursing homes and some charities. And they're very close to have now nearly done 3,000 um, scrubs that they've made and given out. Um, and I believe Clyde's got an update on the larder. <clears throat> yes, she's got an update on the larder here. The um, the larder's been seems to be slightly extra busy last week, going out for more food parcels for the same reasons Alex pointed out previously. Um, lack of income being one of the main things. Also, that um, Abby Edwards, the organizer at the larder, um, she's been isolating now because her husband's got some symptoms. Not definite what they are. But she's had to isolate herself. But we got enough volunteers around there to actually cope with what's going on. But <laughs> it is an increase. And I'm happy to say that um, I don't want to keep pinpointing the vine there, Alec. But um, they are still helping us out on our Wednesday chat from the Pebble Park. And they are actively phoning all our local residents that are on their books about um, how they're feeling. Do they need any assistance? And if they need money assistance, they just get passed over to our money advice people. And that's about it at this moment in time. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Any any questions from the public? Any members of the public on on COVID nineteen? Okay. Moving on then to entertainment. Our entertainment correspondent, Halle, give us an update on what's free and what's available for those of us uh, in lockdown. Sure, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so let's just start by theatre at home. The show must go online. YouTube channel is streaming The Wiz from um, 7 p.m. on Friday, 12th of June for 48 hours. I heard the show is fantastic, so do, uh, if you can, watch it. Uh, from National Theatre at Home, streaming from Thursday, which was last Thursday, for a week, is official Don Mar Warehouse's Korea Lannis. So watch Tom Hiddleston play Korea Lannis in Shakespeare's tragedy of political manipulation and revenue. Um, revenge, sorry, <laughs> revenge. Uh, London National History Museum. They have got a couple of live talks this week. On Tuesday at 12 p.m. for one hour, uh, they're going to talk about corals and climate cha changes. And on Friday, 12th of June, they're going to have an online event about volcanoes. So if your children are interested in volcanoes or coral, this would be a good opportunity for, to, for them to learn. Now, if you're at home and looking for specific children's activities this week, there's a children's astronomy session on Tuesday, 9th of June at 3 p.m. Dr. Nicole Pollack will present an interactive children's talk all about finding astronauts around other stars. So you need to join the YouTube channel. Um, I will put the link on the chat. So hopefully your children will enjoy that as well. Last week, I did mention about how to learn a new uh, skills free. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning it again. So uh, whilst we are in, still in lockdown, Perks at Work uh, is now um, become Perks at Home and they've got loads of free classes from community online academics. So is they, they have got every Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the booking opens on Monday and you need to be quick because they're, they're quite popular classes. Again, the classes are uh, for adults. They are yoga, uh, nutrition, Pilates, dances, loads of things, languages. And for children, they've got becoming a YouTuber, coding, introduction to chess, um, you know, hip hop, dancing, lots of things going on. Now you can subscribe to Masterclass. Um, they are not free, but they are not outrageous either. So uh, the classes are um, about creative writings. Uh, they can take you through independent filmmaking, photography. So there's loads happening there as well. And you can just go to their uh, website on www.masterclass.com. Uh, now, uh, Aldershot Princess Hall is having their sixth youth theater online for four to eight years old. Mm. And it's all about creating characters. So these sessions are totally free and open to everyone. Uh, so you need to 
uh, sort of uh, look at their website and they, uh, as well as you can just join, watch it on the Facebook um, or, or, or the website. And it's happening every Tuesday at 3 p.m. throughout. It's been happening throughout April and May and well into June as well. Uh, they also have got their pantomime uh, playlist and their um, songs uh, from uh, their pantomime Peter Pan this week. So if your children are interested in sing along, that's a good opportunity for them to sort of join and do that. Also, on all the short library, uh, there is a, uh, there's quite a lot happening. Have a look at their Facebook or website, uh, but there's always uh, there is a special mini toddler time and they're singing uh, children's uh, rhymes. I think that's all about me uh, from me this week. Have a fantastic week and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Hale. So, uh, start to bring the program to a conclusion. Um, thank everyone for their contributions from uh, my colleagues in the, the, the Rushmore Labour Councillors and for the number of questions we've had from uh, the public online and directly in the meeting. To remind everyone that um, we will uh, next week update you on the plans for Town Centre when all non-essential shops reopen and the queuing systems there. To remind everyone that the household waste recycling centres from the 15th operate a booking only service. And again, um, information is online on the Hampshire County Council website, but we will update you again next week. If anyone, if any vivid uh, leaseholders or tenants have issues and uh, are frustrated with the length of time they've waited for repairs or neighbourhood issues to be resolved, please use your local councillors to escalate those uh, those those outstanding issues and again any local policing problems please use 101 if it's really serious 999 and if you feel you're not getting a response again please use your your local ward councillors so i'd like to thank everyone for their time and uh, really useful information that we've been able to, to share this morning and uh, I think next Saturday we should be back to our 9.30 uh, start time. But thank, uh, as I say, thank uh, my colleagues on the council, thank uh, the residents for participating, and above all, thanking our director, producer Hash, for his uh, technical skills. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Enjoy your night.